Dear sisters and brothers in the risen Lord, it seems incredible that Easter is upon us. This most important time of the year reminds us of the boundless mercy of our loving Father and the invitation to overcome the chains of sin and death in the victory of the resurrection. The beautiful Paschal narrative from the Gospel according to St. John begins while it is still dark and thus recalls creation when new life began. The author uses three different verbs, which the English version translates as see. Mary Magdalene, full of love and of sorrow, as she heads to the tomb, takes in the stone rolled away. Peter, whose position and role are clearly the object of respect, contemplates the scene and notices that the burial shroud is left where it was. How grateful we are to Peter's successor, who has given us this extraordinary holy year in which to contemplate the abundant mercy of Almighty God. Finally, John sees and believes. He has a clear idea that Jesus is no longer dead, but lives. We have been preparing throughout the 40 days of Lent by our sacrifices, self-denial, fasting, increased prayer, and special acts of charity in order to clear our hearts and minds of everything that distracts us from the centrality of Jesus Christ. In a world that is so full of things and noise, it is important to pause and to acknowledge the Lord of the universe. We thank Him for His victory over sin and death and His generosity in extending that to us. It is my joy to greet you at this significant time of rejoicing and spend some time thinking about how precious we are and how much we are loved. Alone, weakened by sin, expelled from paradise, we had serious need of a Savior. Almighty God sent His Son, born of a virgin, to offer us the real reason for our hope, the Messiah and Savior of the world. Divine mercy has its most profound expression in the Father's love, who saw our human sinful condition and moved with pity, determined that He would save us. However, no ordinary instrument of clemency could achieve the results. Salvation is not within our grasp. It is not a prize to be earned or a promotion to be received. Rather, it is a completely gratuitous gift showered upon us by a merciful Father. There is no greater love than this, than one give up his life for his friends. That is the precious gift of mercy. Almighty God loved us, sent his Son to take on our human condition, to suffer die, and rise again. Each one of us experiences that divine love and rejoices in being precious in the sight of the loving Father. Each one of us feels His embrace, the robe of restoration, the sandals of a free person, and the ring of belonging. Those are elements from the welcome accorded by the loving Father to the prodigal Son. But through the waters of baptism, each of us has been welcomed by Almighty God into new life. We can rejoice in that new life. We can sing the Alleluia of victory. However, there is more. Pope Francis 
wrote in the papal bull proclaiming this holy year, and I quote, I have proclaimed an extraordinary jubilee of mercy as a special time for the church, a time when the witness of believers might grow stronger and more effective. We want to live this jubilee year in light of the Lord's words, merciful like the Father. I present, therefore, this extraordinary jubilee dedicated to living out in our daily lives the mercy which the Father constantly extends to all of us. In this jubilee year, may the church echo the word of God that resounds strong and clear as a message and a sign of pardon, strength, aid and love. As we celebrate Easter then, we renew our commitment to make manifest this victory over sin and death in our lives and to be instruments of divine mercy for the benefit of our sisters and brothers. The time of Jubilee in the Old Testament always had a social effect. Lands leased were returned debts canceled, the poor cared for, and commitments renewed. As you walk through a local holy door and receive the plenary indulgence, couple that pious action with an extension or an invitation to others to experience divine mercy. That will make the Jubilee a wider experience and it will fill our hearts with lasting serenity, which is part of the Easter victory. Peter and John ran to the empty tomb on Easter morn. The world has never been the same. We have also been changed by the Paschal mystery, and so we give thanks and share what we have experienced. On behalf of my auxiliary bishops, the priests, and the staff of the Archdiocese for the Military Services of the United States, I wish you every good blessing in the Easter season, whether you are deployed or not, in a medical center of the Department of Veterans Affairs, or a retiree frequenting an installation chapel. May the risen Lord fill your hearts with serenity and the peace which only He can give.